Do you remember that time Facebook admitted to conducting psychological experiments on nearly 700,000 of their users? If you're like most people, you probably don't because that story did not get near as much media attention as it deserved. In this video, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane to revisit what Facebook proudly admitted to doing and then how four months later they altered some documentation to try and mislead the public into thinking the users consented to being a part of this experiment. I am Dr. John Padfield. I'm a business professor and this is Business Reform where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, health, and the environment. As I always do, I have posted links to all of my source materials in the show notes below. I know Facebook is now called Meta, but because we're looking at things that were done several years ago before Facebook changed their name last year, I will continue to refer to them as Facebook in this video. If you're wondering why I'm talking about a story that was in the news at least a little bit eight years ago, there's two main reasons. The first is I don't think Facebook really learned anything from what they did other than don't publish articles about experiments you run on your users. The second is I believe that what they were researching, emotional contagion, is a very important topic and something that we need to be looking at today. And I plan to be building on this video with a series of videos coming in the near future. It seems pretty obvious that a person's emotions can be influenced by the emotions of their friends, family, and coworkers. But is the emotional influence as strong when it's conveyed by written online comments rather than in-person comments that are heard, where you also get the benefit of hearing someone's tone of voice and seeing their facial expressions? And how many negative comments or status updates does a person have to read before they're influenced enough to spread the negativity by posting a negative comment of their own? And how long does it take to, for a person to return to normal after being exposed to a stream of negative comments? These are the types of questions the U.S. Department of Defense has funded research to investigate. In 2008, the U.S. Department of Defense launched the Minerva Initiative, which they describe as being a Department of Defense-sponsored, university-based social science research initiative with the goal to improve the DOD's basic understanding of the social, cultural, behavioral, and political forces that shape regions of the world of strategic importance to the U.S. And I'm just guessing that probably includes the U.S. itself. It's interesting to note the first item listed in the Minerva Initiative list of priority research topics for fiscal year 14 is, quote, belief propagation and movements for change, and subtopics under that heading include, quote, belief formulation and influence and emotional contagion. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that some of you watching may not be familiar with the term emotional contagion. But if you subscribe to my channel, you will hear a lot more about this in coming videos. It's an important topic, especially when we're talking about social media. According to neuroeconomics, emotional contagion refers to a phenomenon of an automatic adoption of an emotional state of another person. In January 2012, Facebook conducted emotional contagion experiments, which were published in the National Academy of Science in June 2014, in a paper entitled, Experimental Evidence of Massive Scale Emotional Contagion Through Social Networks. The lead author of the article was from Facebook's core data science team, and the two co-authors were from Cornell University. The original version of the Cornell Chronicle story published on June 10, 2014, which highlighted the findings of this study, stated the project was funded in part by the Army Research Office. However, the story was later revised to state the research received no external funding. So what exactly did Facebook do in these experiments? Well, let's read the abstract to the study itself. Emotional states can be transferred to others via emotional contagion, leading people to experience the same emotions without their awareness. Emotional contagion is well established in laboratory settings with people transferring positive and negative emotions to others. Data from a large, real-world social network collected over a 20-year period suggests that longer-lasting moods, such as depression and happiness, can be transferred through networks, although the results are controversial. In an experiment with people who use Facebook, wait a minute, I can't let that go unchallenged. The abstract reads, in an experiment with people who use Facebook. That sounds like the people who use Facebook knew about it. If you read the whole article, which I have, 
I believe that wording is misleading and disingenuous. It should read, in an experiment on people who use Facebook. Let's go back to the abstract with the correct reading. In an experiment on people who use Facebook, we test whether emotional contagion occurs outside of in-person interaction between individuals by reducing the amount of emotional content in the newsfeed. When positive expression were reduced, people produced fewer positive posts and more negative posts. When negative expressions were reduced, the opposite pattern occurred. These results indicate that emotions expressed by others on Facebook influence our own emotions, constituting experimental evidence for massive scale contagion via social networks. Did you catch that? Facebook intentionally filtered users' news feeds to either reduce the amount of positive news, such as somebody they know getting engaged or maybe somebody getting promoted, or they may have been put in the group where Facebook reduced their negative news. Maybe somebody they know was fired or somebody they know developed health problems. But Facebook was man intentionally manipulating people's news feeds so that somebody would either get a lot less good news or they would get a lot less negative news. Let's take a closer look at the details. N equals 689,003 is research speak for saying Facebook selected over 689,000 people without their knowledge or consent and performed an experiment on them. For half of that group, 344,500 people, Facebook filtered out good news from their users' news feeds, so those users would be bombarded with negative news just to see what happened. How many negative pieces of news without counteracting positive pieces of news does it take before a person starts making negative posts of their own? And I love the way Facebook describes how, quote, people who viewed Facebook in English were qualified for selection into the experiment. Remember, the lead author of this article worked for Facebook, and he did not mention any effort being made to prevent people suffering from depression from being included in this study. He didn't make any mention of any effort to make sure that children were not included in the study. In fact, a June 30, 2014 article in Forbes states as fact, Facebook did not filter children under 18 from this experiment, so it's entirely possible the experiment included children as young as 13 years old. Just for context, according to an article on Harvard's health blog on October 20, 2011, just three months before Facebook decided to see what would happen if they blocked positive news on nearly 350,000 of their users' news feeds, approximately one in 10 Americans were on antidepressants. That means somewhere around 35,000 of the people Facebook included in their experiment were on antidepressants at the time Facebook decided to do a psychological experiment on them by subjecting them to a constant stream of bad news for a week. I realize the people conducting these experiments are experts in their field, and they were doing experiments to increase our knowledge of emotional contagion. And Facebook and Cornell researchers deemed this experiment a success. They stated these results indicate emotions expressed by others on Facebook influence our own emotions, constituting experimental evidence for massive scale contagion via social networks. I am sure the Department of Defense was excited to learn about this. This is exactly the type of research the Department of Defense was willing to fund, whether or not they actually funded this experiment. My concern is, we don't have to go back in history very far to find examples of completely unethical experiments being performed in the name of science. And I'm not talking about having to go all the way back to Germany during World War II. I'm talking about going back to the United States and looking at some of the experiments that were run from the 1950s through at least the 1970s. The heart of the issue centers around the subject of informed consent. In the days after the study was published, Facebook came under fire a little bit and they claimed that people had given their consent to be a part of this research because there is a clause in the data use policy at Facebook that says they have the right to use your data for research. However, a June 30, 2014 Forbes article pointed out, even the word research in the Facebook data use policy was not added until four months after the study had been conducted. So Facebook was not being honest when they claimed users gave their consent to being a part of the January 2012 emotional contagion study. 
But the bigger issue is that even if the word research had been in the data use policy at the time that Facebook did this experiment, that does not even come close to meeting the legal definition of informed consent. Informed consent has a legal meaning. In 1974, Congress passed the National Research Act in response to abusive human research experiments that were going on, such as the Tuskegee syphilis experiment from 1932 to 1972, the Stanford Prison Experiment in 1971, and the CIA's MKUltra experiments, which ran from 1953 through at least 1973. As a side note for anyone not familiar with MKUltra, it is not a conspiracy theory. It has been very well documented by Stephen Kinzer in his book, Poisoner in Chief, Sidney Gottlieb and the CIA Search for Mind Control. In 1973, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all MKUltra files to be destroyed, but they forgot to destroy the receipts in the accounting department and years of expense reports and departmental budgets survived and were later pieced together in Stephen Kinzer's book. But getting back to the National Research Act, it led to the creation of institutional review boards. Institutional review boards are charged with the responsibility of protecting human subjects in any federally funded research. As a professor, my university could lose federal funding if I did something as simple as doing an online survey without the approval of the Institutional Research Board. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services defines the general requirements for obtaining informed consent from research subjects. The following are just three of the eight items researchers generally are required to provide to volunteers taking part in a research study. A statement that the study involves research and an explanation of the purpose of the research, a description of any reasonably foreseeable risk or discomforts to the subject, and a statement that participation is voluntary and refusal to participate will not involve any penalties or loss of benefits to which the subject is otherwise entitled. The legal requirements for conducting research on minors or people with mental health issues are even higher, and the Facebook study did not mention taking any steps to screen minors from the randomly selected sample of nearly 700,000 subjects. The authors of the study repeatedly referred to Facebook's users randomly selected to be included in the study as, quote, participants. However, because the users did not volunteer and did not give their informed consent by any legitimate academic or legal standard, the users were, by definition, involuntary participants at best. The proper word for involuntary participants in any medical or psychological experiment, such as proverbial lab rat, is subject, not participant. This study intentionally subjected 700,000 Facebook users, possibly including children, to emotional manipulation. For these reasons, I believe the emotional contagion study has crossed a serious ethical line that should have never been crossed. However, the bigger issue is not this study itself. The bigger issue is that a publicly traded company claims Putting the word research in their data use policy is the equivalent of informed consent. With the amount of interest and in funding that's being made available for this type of research, I'm very concerned about what the future holds. What experiments are going on right now that we might not even be aware of where data is being taken and used or people are being subtly manipulated under the, the guise of research. I will be returning to the subject of emotional contagion in an upcoming video series, so if you haven't done so already, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel, turn on the notifications so that you'll be notified every time that I post new content. What do you think? Do you believe an ethical line was crossed in this research? Does it sound just a little bit Orwellian for the Department of Defense to be funding this type of research? Do you believe, as I do, that this research is probably still going on today and just people are being a little more careful about what they publish. My recurring theme on this channel is choose wisely. I encourage you to do so by limiting your use of social media in general. As I mentioned in a previous video, as of 2021, the average internet user is spending almost two and a half hours per day just on social media. Reclaim your mind from the influence of social media algorithms. Call a family member or a friend and have a real voice-to-voice -voice conversation, or better yet, go see them in person. If you like this video, please subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment below, and you will automatically be entered into a drawing for a free 32-ounce, American-made, filtered water bottle 
from Epic Water Filters worth $45. This is not a sponsored video, but I will be giving away five Epic filtered water bottles when my subscriber count hits 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 subscribers. I am available for speaking at your company or organization's events, and you can contact me via LinkedIn. My link is in the show notes below. Thank you for watching, and remember, choose wisely.